In this video, I'll be introducing the metric topology. So the first definition is going to be of a metric. So what a metric is, is it's going to be a function that takes in two elements of a set. So it's going to be some element of x cross x, it's going to take in two elements of the set, and it's going to output a real number. The real number it outputs is called the distance. A metric is a distance function. So between x and y, I find the distance. OK, so the first property is going to be that the distance between x and x is 0, and that the distance between x and y is bigger than 0 for x not equal to y. So for two distinct points, this distance is positive. And if it's between x and x, then it's just 0. That's a pretty standard um, thing you'd want in a distance function. The second property is that the distance between x and y is equal to the distance between y and x. It doesn't matter which way I measure it, it's the same either way. And then the third condition is going to involve another point, z. So we have this new triangle. And if you remember, there's something called the triangle inequality, which says that the sum of the distances of any two sides of a triangle should be bigger than the third side. So the distance between x and z should be less than the distance between x and y and y and z. So let's write that down. The distance between x and z is less than or equal to the distance between x and y plus the distance between y and z. So a metric is a generalized distance function. So on Rn, we'll have the metric, the distance between x and y, to be defined as the square root of the sum, from i equals 1 to n, of the distances between the components squared. This is just the Pythagorean theorem. I have x and I have y, what I do is I look at first this difference in between their um, x positions and then the difference in between their second coordinates. So what I look at is this length and I look at this length. This creates a right triangle so the distance between them is the square root of the sum of the squares of these distances, which is what this distance function is doing, but in general dimensions. All right, so now we can generate a topology given a metric or a distance function. So the topology is going to be the one generated by a basis. And this basis in particular is going to be B equal to the set of balls given on our metric D around a point X of radius epsilon. So we have a point X, we have a radius epsilon, and we pick a ball around it. So this is for X in X and epsilon bigger than zero. So how do I define this ball? Well, you probably could guess it. It's the set of Y that's in X such that the distances between X and Y is less than epsilon. So this ball includes all the stuff in here. Any point in here, y, that's distance to x is less than epsilon is going to be in this ball. So this is the basis that generates the metric topology. Originally, we defined the topology on Rn using this metric. But what we ended up doing is also defining it using the product topology. So what I'm going to do now is prove that the product topology on Rn is the exact same topology as what is generated by this metric. First of all, I'm going to need to use a theorem. Say I'm given a topological space X that's going to be given two topologies. T, which I'm going to say is generated by a basis B, and also another one, T prime which is generated by a basis B prime. So T is generated by B, T prime generated by B prime. Both topologies on X. 
Then t is going to be a subset of t prime, so it's going to be a smaller topology. If and only if, for every single point in x, and every single basis element that contains x, so for every point and a basis element in the first basis that contains it, there exists a b prime, another basis element, that's in the other basis, such that x is an element of this b prime, and this b prime is a subset of b. So I pick a point x, I pick a basis element, b, that's in the first basis. But then what I can do is that if I know that t is a subset of t prime, then there is a another basis, uh, a b prime, which is in the other basis. So this b prime generates a bigger topology if there are smaller basis elements, is what this is saying. If you make it smaller, you can get more sets. The proof of this is easy, I'll leave it up to you, or you can watch my cross-teaching episode where I detail a proof of this. The link will be in the i-card up there. Let's use this to our advantage. Let's prove that on Rn, the topology generated by the metric on Rn is the same as the topology gener uh, the product topology on Rn. So the metric topology is the same as the product topology. Proof of this goes as follows. Well, first do is prove that the metric topology is a subset of the product topology. We choose an x an element. We choose an x, and we choose a basis element around it. So say it's around the point y of radius epsilon. So I have x an element of this basis element. So let's draw this. I have y, I have a ball around it, and I have x in it. What I'll do is actually create a new ball, which is going to be of radius, say, delta, that's going to be contained inside of this. This is the definition of an open set, like this. And then what I'm going to do is prove that there is a b prime that's in the product topology that's a subset of it. Namely, what I'm going to do is take the open set, I'll call it v, which is going to be the product of x1 minus delta divided by the square root of n. And here's the dimension. And you'll see why I'm doing delta over the square root of n in a second. And this is the open interval from x1 minus that to x1 plus that, all the way up until xn minus delta over the square root of n until xn plus delta over the square root of n. So this is the Cartesian product of all of the open sets. So we do the ball of radius delta over the square root of n around x1, the ball of radius delta over the square root of n around x2, and then all the way up all the dimensions until we get this box. So in here, I'd create something that'd look like this. And we have it that x is right in the center of this box, and that this distance right here, that that side length of the box is two times delta over square root of n. So we're just creating a tiny little box around it using the Cartesian product of all of these open intervals. And then, suppose z is in v. Well then what? Then the distance between x and z which is going to be the square root of the sum from i equals 1 to n. I'm just plugging this into the definition here. This is the square root of the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi minus zi squared. But look at the definition here. x1 minus delta square root of n. If z is in v, then xi minus zi from this product definition is going to be less than is going to be less than delta over the square root of n. Right? Because it's in this ball of radius delta over the square root of n. So this distance right here is going to be less than delta over the square root of n. But then when I'm squaring it, then I get the square root of 
Well, right there I have delta squared over n. But this sum is of a constant over and over again. So this is the sum from i equals 1 to n of a constant, just adding it to itself n times. So that means that I could just multiply it by n. But look at that. Right here I get the square root of delta squared, which is just delta. So the distance between x and z is less than delta. But is that not just the condition for z to be in this ball? So that means that z is going to be an element of this ball, which is in turn a subset of the ball around y. What I just proved is that this V is a subset of BD, because if Z is in V, then Z is in the ball. I can show V is a subset of that. Oh, but that means it satisfies the condition. I found a basis element that is a subset of the other basis element. Whew. Now. What all you have to do is then show that the product topology is a subset of the metric topology. I'm going to leave this part of the proof to you. All you have to do is use something similar to this, but in reverse. So I'm just going to introduce some new metrics. Another metric is called the bounded metric. So I'm going to be given a metric D on X. Then what I'm able to construct is d bar, which takes in two points x, y, and it outputs the minimum between the distance between them and 1. So this is just creating a bounded version of this metric, which the distance, if it's less than 1, and it's just going to be 1 if it's bigger than 1. Now this is actually useful, surprisingly. And it's because of a little thing called the uniform topology. So the uniform topology is going to be defined on Rj, which is the product for alpha in J on R, if you don't remember. So this is a set that's an infinite Cartesian product. Well, it's probably infinite. It doesn't need to be. But the uniform topology on this is going to be defined as rho between x and y, or rho bar, is going to be equal to the supremum, the supremum of the bounded distance between x alpha and y alpha for alpha and j. So what we're doing is we're just looking at the maximum of all of the differences of the components. Remember the components here, x alpha, y alpha, are in R. So this is like d bar of x, y is going to be the minimum between the difference between x and y and 1. So absolute value of x minus y or 1. That's what this bounded metric is right here. And then we're taking the supremum of all of these. Interesting fact is that the topology generated by this metric is going to be between the standard product topology and the box topology. And um, if this j is finite, they're all equal to each other. But if it's infinite, they're all different from each other. So what I did was create a metric such that on r to some infinite set, is going to generate a different topology that's between the two major topologies we looked at before. So what if, instead of creating a topology like this, we created a topology that actually generated Rj? Let's do that. Specifically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a metric D, capital D, which generates R omega under the product topology. I define it as d of x, y to be the supremum of the bounded um, distance between x, i and y, i. 
So this is like I did before with the uniform topology, except now what I'm going to do is divide this by i. And this is for i equals 1 to infinity. Surprisingly, this generates the product topology. The reason why? I'm leaving up to you again. Except this time I'm going to give you a little hint. What you do is you use the exact same idea. You have a ball in this realm, like this. Specifically what you do is you find an n so large that epsilon is going to be bigger than 1 over n. So right here I have the positive real axis and right here I could have epsilon. I just find a big enough integer so that 1 over n is behind it. Because as n gets bigger this tends towards one, 0 so you can always find an n that's less than epsilon. So you find that 1 over n and then what you do is you create v equal to the product between x1 minus epsilon and x1 plus epsilon, Cartesian product all the way up until x capital N, this integer right here, minus epsilon until xn plus epsilon, and then everything else is going to be r. This is a basis element in r omega. You can prove quite easily that v is a subset of the ball. And then we do it in the other way, so that v is going to be a product from i equals 1 to infinity of open intervals ui such that such that ui is going to be between xi minus epsilon i and xi plus epsilon i for finitely many i. So I'll say maybe i equals alpha 1 to alpha n. That's completely arbitrary. It just has to be finitely many i. And then everywhere else, ui is equal to r. That's a basis element. Then what you do is you take epsilon equal to the minimum of epsilon i from right here divided by i. This is for i equals alpha 1 to alpha n. And then you create the ball around it. And then you can prove that the ball of radius epsilon around that is a subset of v. And then you proved that this metric generates r omega. So what we covered is metrics, the topology is generated by metrics, that the Euclidean metric generates the Euclidean topology, that there are t uh, metrics on r to the j that don't generate the same topology, and that there is a metric on r omega that generates it. And this idea where a metric generates a topology is what is known as metrization. We'll look into this further later on. And it's actually a very important idea in general topology. And that's it. No stop!